In the times when people aren't able to find graphic cards, there are some gutsy humans out there who are willing to go as far as going all custom for their builds. Well, this is one such story. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So this video has been made in collaboration with The Custom Nation and I will make sure to post their details in the description below. So this build is completely planned and built by them and I was extremely lucky that I didn't have to face all the tremendous hassles uh, these guys went through. Plus custom liquid cooling builds are not my forte so far. So no point of me acting as a fictional character here and pretending that I know this stuff and those hands which you will see in the build later are mine. Because clearly I don't have those huge arms. Well, I'm not sure if I should go the linear way and make this video sound like any other video where I list the parts first and then share the build journey. Let's be totally dynamic this one time. So the case we are going for is the Lion Lee Dynamic O11 which was chosen by the client. As it was compact enough without sacrificing much of the features its bigger brother and sister have on them. The motherboard we used for this build was the ASUS ROG Strix B550A and in white it looks gorgeous. It has decent VRAM performance and all the necessary features and ports and can support up to 5100MHz of DDR4 RAM. On the rear, the several USB ports include 6 USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2 ports with a USB Type-C port. And the front would have 2 USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports with 4 USB 2.0 ports. So yeah, clearly enough for frigging ports. The processor used is the mighty Ryzen 9 5950X so that your life can have all the cores and their threads because why not? I mean this is an all pumped up build so how can a few extra threads hurt anyone? The total memory would be 32 GB from Team Group. The T-Force Extreme ARGB is specced at 4000MHz. Well these RAMs are completely filled with RGB bling all over them and they look so damn beautiful with their subtly spread lighting effects. And nothing but the best for this system, so the thermal grease used was the Kingpin uh, Cooling KPX. And what the hell is that? And this fancy looking ornament which is the AM4 CPU water block is by Barrow. And doesn't it look pretty? As we were obviously installing the easy parts first, uh, the next one was the Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe drive. And over it goes this pretty heatsink. There goes the motherboard inside the case because nothing's real without mothers and boards. For some weird reason, we decided to take this random shot at this random time. I mean, it's already looking neat. Let's wrap up. No, I'm kidding. Then goes the white colored Cooler Master Master Fan MF120 Halo. And we made sure that the air is sucked from the bottom, which this case shouldn't have troubles with due to its tall ass feet. Then goes the 360mm radiator on the back side of the case, which is again from Barrow. And these were specially custom painted in white to suit the overall theme of the build. And on them go the three fans which are to be used as exhaust this time. Well on the top of the radiator these 90 degrees uh, fitting extenders go in which are again from Barrow. One is obviously for an inlet and the other one is outlet as what goes in must come out. Well one of these fittings will vomit out the cold water which will go and hit the hot damn CPU. And then from it it will come out pretty hot and then travel along all the other loops to enter the radiator again to get cooled down. Got it? Good. And if that's not clear, then here's a little picture explaining the flow of the liquid uh, throughout the loops of this build. We follow the similar trend for the top of the case, making the fans as exhaust again. After putting these fittings on the CPU block, we move on placing the vertical mount for the GPU. And as some of you can notice, the backside of the grill was cut to accommodate the GPU and its block. Then we start to disassemble the sweet ASO stuff RTX 3080, which literally made my heart cry but the client doesn't care. He wants everything to look very blinky and with liquid and loops inside of it. So F my heart. Well, as you witness how this is done, a fun little quick story. The client had bought and imported a water block for the RTX 3080 FE, but even after waiting for months, we were not able to get our hands on it. So in the end, we gave up and went with this ASUS stuff uh, card instead. Yes, a lot of money was lost, but you can't really put a price on the pure passion of having one of the most beautiful setups when you can afford one. And then we apply the same kingpin thermal grease on the GPU die. Damn, this guy really knows how to apply his thermal grease, uh, I mean uh, kingpin's thermal grease on the GPU die. And then after a few thermal pads on the memory modules, we place the water block on the GPU PCB and tighten all the screws back in. Well, to be honest, the GPU already looks very good and we then placed it on the vertical mount we just installed. 
Barrow does good job overall. And then finally comes the real USP of this whole build. Well, this custom distro plate is completely custom and is made by the custom nation. And this part of the video is uber custom because of all the custom words. Even the script is custom. Well, Divyam had to go through two or three iterations before he could finalize uh, this custom design and this uh, custom distro plate for the front of the case. I mean, the efforts and the story behind it needs a dedicated video, but I don't think we have the time to make that right now. But the effort was really thorough. Soon after installing all the fittings on the GPU and the distro plate and on the CPU block, this guy does his magic in leveling them up and shit, which would be pretty boring if I try to show all of that in this video. And then more custom stuff is then installed on this custom rig by the custom nation. I think it's getting old now. Well, if you're someone who knows more than me about the custom loopy liquid cooling builds, then you'd know how crucial this step is where you would check uh, the air pressure and make sure there are no leaks throughout the loop. And here you can watch us filling liquid stuff in one of the holes of the distro plate. We chose the white colored liquid here to go with the overall white aesthetic of the build. And then we do the easy parts like putting the hard drives in and the power supply and connecting all the typical connectors of the case. If you want to know what goes where from a power supply or generally about the different connectors on a motherboard, I would link a few of these past videos in the description below which are very thorough. And this is almost it. Enjoy the little footage I tried to edit for this build. And as you can see by the graphs on your screen, there was a huge improvement in thermals and the overall cooling of the build. So I would say in the end, the client went all out with his money and the investment he decided to make on this build. And it looks pretty worth it. So I do hope you loved what you saw here uh, in this video and enjoy the holy grail of building PCs with this custom liquid cooling build. I thoroughly enjoyed working on this video with Divyam and make sure to check his page too. So stay safe humans, that's all for today. Mewboard out!